Hello and welcome. This is the final division we have to talk about before the preseason starts. So let's jump right into it. We're going to, be, we're going to begin with the team who had the first overall pick in the Chicago Bears. So obviously, Caleb Williams is the main talking point with Chicago. How is he going to play? How is the Chicago going to be around him and everything? He is the main piece to watch. But Chicago has built a really, really good team around him throughout both the draft and free agency especially. Because they started everything off with two main acquisitions in DeAndre Swift for the running back room and Keaton Allen for the receiving room. Those are two main additions in the receiving room now with is looking a lot, a lot better than Justin Fields had to work with. Plus, they also drafted Roma Dunze. So, Caleb Williams has plenty of targets to throw to, and he has help in a running back room with DeAndre Swift, and they have Khalil Herbert. So, the offense should be better for Chicago. The last time, Chicago, Chicago has never had a 4,000-yard passer or a 30-touchdown passer. There is a chance that Caleb Williams can do at least one of those this season. And if he does, he's already a legend in Chicago. The defense should still be solid for Chicago. Now, they added Kevin Byard, which is a move I like. But the issue more so comes with the front seven and defensive line. Because while, yes, they have Montez Sweat, they don't really have much else on that front. And it's like uh, being able to apply opposing pressure is a key thing. And if they're going to have to rely on coverage sacks, I don't really like their chances with what they have to work with. Now, another, so another normally special teams does not get talked about a lot here, but they did draft Tory Taylor out of Iowa, who set multiple, multiple records while at Iowa for his punting. And I mentioned it in a previous one of these breakdowns that the field position battle is a massive one, especially for a team like Chicago, who has struggled in the recent years to get the offense going at a consistent rate. If you can consistently win the field position battle, your chances are a lot better than if you can't. So that is a massive, massive piece there. And when it comes to Matt Eberflus, I believe he is coaching for his job this season. If Chicago has yet another really disappointment of a season and they're not really competitive at all I fully expect him to be gone because I feel like Chicago wants to maximize what they have with Caleb Williams' rookie contract if he lives up to the hype he is going to be asking for a lot of money come this contract ending so if you waste a year of it you're wasting twenty million dollars because that's about how much he's being he, that's that's how much he's being paid this year for his rookie deal. So Eberflus needs to get the ground needs to hit the ground rolling with this team now. Yes, they won what was it six seven games last year. They need to be fighting for the playoff spot for a playoff spot the entire season. They need to show they can be competitive against anyone. Mainly because like he's a defensive-minded coach, that defense needs to step up compared to what it was, what it has been under his tenure. So Eberflus is someone I, I could see being gone at the end of the year. Going over to Minnesota, we talk about the Vikings, and man, they're they're looking for not even necessarily, not necessarily a rebuild, but a retool. It will probably end up being a down year due to the loss of Kurt Cousins. And J.J. McCarthy, I'm hoping, will be the starter. Because the key thing is, you need to get him and Justin Jefferson on the same page as quick as possible. Because if you want both of them to be the futures of your team, you cannot have one beat. You cannot have the chemistry being off base. So hopefully during training camp, they will be able to get that chemistry built. So that way, you can, you can try to make a good push during the regular season. Again, I would hope that J.J. McCarthy gets to start from the jump, but I also wouldn't be shocked if Sam Darnold does win the job and is playing for at least the first three weeks. Just because it's a rookie quarterback, you want to give him time to kind of get used to the NFL and everything. 
but they do have a pretty good receiving duo in Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. And yes, Jordan Addison does have some off-the-field stuff now. But it's still a really good receiving duo. And if Jordan Addison develops how I think he can, it could very easily be one of the better receiving duos in the league. They still have TJ Hawkinson. And they acquired Aaron Jones in the offseason. So it is looking like it's the case where if they, they have a team built well to the point where if they were if they were to have kept Kurt Cousins, they were so ready to make a deep playoff run. Now, now it feels like the plans are pushed back a year because you need to see what you have in JJ McCarthy. You're not you don't want Sam as good. You don't want Sam Darnold to be the primary quarterback going forward. You need to make sure that J.J. McCarthy can develop and has time and the reps to develop. He's the main future of this team. The defense took a little bit of a hit because of the trading of Daniel Hunter, but I do really like their signing of Andrew Van Ginkle. Obviously, I wish Miami could have kept him, but it is what it is. He's going to provide a good young presence in that defensive line. He can apply pressure, and he can... And he can Guard the screens really well. They also bring in Shaquille Griffin, which was an inter- interesting move they made. It's to try and t- is to try and tighten up that secondary, but Shaquille Griffin is a really is a good corner, so he should he will be able to make an impact. Though how much compared to what they've had, main thing being like Patrick Peterson being gone. I'm going. It's definitely something. I know Patrick. Pe- I know Patrick Peterson's been gone for like two years at this point, but. It's 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 something. It's trying to find kind of that same that same production level that he had while he was in Minnesota. Although you obviously hoping for something better when it comes to like a main corner. Now last season did not go as expected due to Kirk Cousins getting injured, and this season is already looking like it's not going to be that massive of a season. But assuming JJ McCarthy is what is like he's able to play what people expect of him to play. And he kind of gets that Michigan form and kind of that groove going. Minnesota could definitely be a sneaky team for teams to play against. Do I think it will happen? Not really. But at the same time, I want to see kind of what this team as a whole looks like and what JJ McCarthy looks like in preseason. So we'll see. Now let's talk about Green Bay. Because... They were one of, I think, I think the, if not one of the youngest teams in the NFL last season, and they walked into Jerry World and kicked the Cowboys' ass in the playoffs, and they played, they played competitively in San Francisco. Jordan Love is the guy in Green Bay. They did it again, and I don't know how. Yes, they lose Aaron Jones, but they get Josh Jacobs. Like, they find ways. Yes, they lose David Bakhtiari, but they drafted Jordan Morgan to be kind of a replacement. Maybe maybe not immediately, but to be someone to develop into a nice replacement. They still have two really young tight ends who are both great tight ends and Luke Musgrave and Tyler Kraft. And it's still just like, it's still Green Bay. Somehow they found a way to be a really, really good team. The receiving room, really young, yet at the same time, a really, really good receiving room. And most of those guys are like two to three years into the league, if that. They they fired Joe Barry, which was which is going to make the defense better by proxy, but then they still went out and made nice moves to improve the defense. They signed Xavier McKinney to be kind of a nickel corner slash safety. They draft Edrin Cooper and they draft Javon Bullard to strengthen the de- to strengthen the second level of the defense, the linebacker room and the secondary, respectively. So, like the Packers are looking to just inst- like they, they they gave the Lions a year for the division, and then and and now are saying, look, we're back to take it. The Packers are going to be dangerous, and of course, Miami has to play them in Lambeau on Thanksgiving night. That game is going to give me nightmares from now till it happens. Finally, we're going to talk about the Detroit Lions. And I love Dan Campbell. Don't get me wrong. I think the Lions, I love the Lions and everything that they've been doing. But they're going to need to step up their game this season. 
because while yes they won the they won the division and yes they made the and they made the conference championship and came one half of solid play away from making the Super Bowl. You you heard what I just said about the Packers. The Packers are not going anywhere. So, the what did the Lions do to kind of try to get ahead and stay ahead of the Packers? Well, they add Donovan Peoples Jones to the receiving room, and there's ban- and they're still banking on James and Williams having a breakout style of season, and I think he could very easily. Like he his style of receiver play is it works for the NFL, but it needs the right scheme. And I think the Lions do have that right scheme. Sam Laporta is entering his second year after making the Pro Bowl last year, and he's still going to be an elite. Honestly, can we say, can we say he's an elite level tight end yet? I feel like we can. He is an elite tight end for Detroit. They went from TJ Hawkinson, who was a great tight end, to Sam Laporta, who is the same level, if not better, than Hawkinson already. And like they still have a really, really good O line room. They improved the secondary by getting a nice second corner to to Brian Branch and Ter and Ter and Teron Arnold. So their secondary should still be good. The main concern is their front seven, and just to put it into perspective, an elite level pass rusher typically averages about 20 to 30% of a team's total pressures. Last season, Aiden Hutchinson averaged 37% of the Lions' pressure. Shout out to Brett Coleman for that stat. So Aiden Hutchinson needs to keep up that level of play for the Lions' front seven to still be even close to what it was last year. They're dependent a lot on Aiden Hutchinson, which is great. Like he's an elite level edge rusher. But it is a lot to ask for a third year guy to put up 40% of your team's pressures. You need help from someone on that defensive line because it can't all be Aiden Hutchinson. That's not sustainable. And we saw that in the second half of the championship game. Again, like I said, I really like Dan Campbell. He more than deserved his extension. But the Lions have a lot of work still to do if they want to make their first Super Bowl. Well, with that being said, let me know your thoughts down below about the NFC North. Also, we are, again, preseason. I believe for the time this video is going up, the preseason should be here. Or at least it is going to be here in like a week or so. I think I have the schedule set in my mind right right now. I'm recording this the day before the new college football drops. <laughs> So yeah, that puts into that puts everything into perspective of all of this. But yeah, leave a like down below if you enjoyed. Like I said, comment down below your thoughts on the NFC North, and subscribe if you're new. There's going to be a bunch, and I mean a bunch of live play-by-plays throughout the NFL regular season, on top of power rankings, predictions, breakdown videos of games, and when the NBA season rolls around, there's going to be a few stuff on that as well. So yeah. Have yourselves a good one. Have yourselves a damn good one. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.